I've seen with a lot of entrepreneurs when they pursue um, their business, when they start their business, they don't have like the, the right mindset. I see that you mentioned researching, like encouraging persons to do their research and everything like that. And it's, it's so interesting that a lot of persons are just focused on, okay, how much money I can make for anything. And I know money is important, but it's like, hey, you need to test us as well with the information, with the facts to make sure that what we're giving you or what we're offering to you is actually what we say it is. Right. You know? And a, a lot of persons don't know that they have triggers. No, what I mean by this is you have eczema issues and eczema issues do have triggers. Mm. Like know how to identify your trigger. It could be as simple as dairy, but you like to eat cheese, you like to drink milk, try, try having a um, vegan cheese or you know, something that could fill. There's almond milk. There's so many variations of plant-based milk. They don't have to. There's dairy-free ice cream. Mm. And me, myself, I'm not supposed to have dairy. So I had to learn how to find ways to enjoy the things that I love. And there's a local company in Jamaica that makes dairy-free ice cream. She's yeah. called Deb. I mean, there's so many things. And I'm very, very brand Jamaica. If you <laughs>
and, and you're going to be launching a website soon for it? Uh, yes, we are working on the website. There's a little setback, mm -hmm. but we are going to be a virtual store. Okay. And we do want to, however, have a, like a warehouse, a pickup location, but we won't really have a physical store. So we you have a physical pickup um, location soon. Right. Um, we're working on it. It's just to find um, a spot right uh -huh. now. But we're just basically online and people book through our Instagram page or our WhatsApp. Okay, so you currently do online deliveries? We do. We do um, use zip mail and we do um, Oxford Express. Oxford. Right. All right, nice, nice. So the fact that you said that you started in 2021 and a lot of people are like, yo, I started in 2020 when the pandemic started and everything like that. What was the thought process before actually getting into this? Um, to be honest, though, I was already mentally there. Right before I took it off in 2021. Like I had the mindset already that I already knew what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. I was already making notes. I was jotting down my plans. And then I was sharing it with my current partners. So that's how they came on board because they saw my vision. And um, so it was basically, I already manifested it and it was already outlined for me. Right. So it was so easy for me to make the dive and make the jump into it. So. It just came out so naturally, it wasn't forced. It wasn't like, oh, I'm doing this to make money. It was so much bigger than that. So it, it just turned out into something really great. And I've been getting great feedback from, you know, persons uh, outside. Yeah. And it's, it's been really good. It's been going good. Okay, it's been going. So, and what would you say is the high point of, the, of your business? Like, what is, what is the most successful month or, yeah, what's the most successful month? So ever been there yeah you know i said that i started in 2021 but we actually started sales this year yeah. april right, right. 2022 and i would say that our biggest sales month was actually june which was father's day and how i got to accomplish that is that i offered a corporate package right so i got a corporate um business to do a father's day deal with me so mm -hmm. i sold out wide um we're basically gift boxes with my packages for fathers and I did a custom card for them, I incorporated their logo, we did literally everything for them, prepared yeah. the package, delivered and stuff. And we also did a Mother's Day one as well, which was in May. So we've been pretty much finding creative ways how to get our products out there. So we're not just us hoping to get individual sales. We're like doing it at a corporate level as well. We're doing gift ideas. Um creating different package deals you give it me ideas. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's basically what we've been doing oh okay okay so we're not just looking at the individual we try to incorporate other things so other um things. i don't necessarily have a skin issue but i know that some of the products that you that you offer deal with maintaining right all right so for persons who at the end of the day a regular bar so has chemicals you may not see the long the quick the short-term effect mm -hmm. but it can be a long-term effect and we um have for persons who don't really have any skin issues we have regular soaps that are just made from coconut milk we have a whole soap just made from it helps with moisture and dry skin just to help we have people who have oily skin oily skin people don't tend to have a lot of acne problems right. but they want to help to keep down the oils so, it's so we have a, right so we have a charcoal um and our charcoal is bamboo charcoal it's mm -hmm. an activated charcoal which is which uh, way more um healthier version of charcoal and because a lot of people tend to complain like even we were at beauty expo recently and someone came up and they were like oh they're afraid of black soaps because it's very harsh on the skin mm -hmm. so i had to know explain the difference between what I provide and what they're used to. But you know, a lot of people can be skeptical. And I would tell people like to also educate yourself. Just because I tell you something, don't just take my word for it. Cause you have to be comfortable with you, especially with somebody, a new brand, you don't know anything about us. We don't have any reputation like Jardins or one of those big skincare brands. Right. And you're like very skeptical, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. And with us, we like to, the difference with us, we like to take, um, an interest into our customers like we like to ask them what do you eat how is your lifestyle because a lot of time the the skin problems that you have are sometimes internal 
and you're setting up yourself to have all of those things. So, all right, with with that in mind, you're kind of opening a, a pretty important point that I've seen with a lot of entrepreneurs when they pursue um, their business, when they start their business, they don't have like the the right mindset. I see that you mentioned researching, do you, like encouraging persons to do their research and everything like that. And it's it's so interesting that a lot of persons are just focused on, okay, how much money I can make for anything. And I know money is important, but it's like, hey, you need to test us as well with the information, with the facts to make sure that what we're giving you or what we're offering to you is actually what we say it is. Right. You know? And a, a lot of persons don't know that they have triggers. No, what I mean by this is you have eczema issues and eczema issues do have triggers. Mm. I know how to identify your trigger. It could be as simple as dairy, but you oh. like to eat cheese, you like to drink milk, try, try having a um, vegan cheese or you know, something that could fill. There's almond milk. There's so many variations of plant-based milk. Now, you don't have to. There's dairy-free ice cream. Mm. And me, myself, I'm not supposed to have dairy. So I had to learn how to find ways to enjoy the things that I love. And there's a local company in Jamaica that makes dairy-free ice cream. She's yeah. called Deb. I mean, there's so many things. And I'm very, very brand Jamaica, if you know. Like, I'm very, very supportive of my own stuff that I make local. So. Sure. Even with my ingredients and my soap, we try to get everything as local as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's how we can make our costs so low and that our soaps sense. affordable. That makes sense. We don't import anything. The only thing that we might import, and it has to be one of those crazy out of the way, is our packaging. If we can't really find any packaging here, then we would have to buy it overseas. Oh. Meaning our jars and our you know boxes that we used to do our gift boxes sometimes. In, it's not really you can't find what you need here which is unfortunate but when it comes to the ingredients we try to make it as well as possible perfect and then um mentioning navigating through those um, challenges what would you say uh, you know is one of the biggest challenges that you have faced or that you are facing in the business hmm. i have to really think about this one a challenge I mean, you sound like I a feel girl. like a, a challenge right now for mm -hmm. me is getting that, getting my clientele, up, getting that trust, getting people to really um, connect with us. Right. Like, I feel like we need to do more with the marketing aspects of the business. I feel like that's a challenge for us right now. But I feel like the more I meet people, the more I interact with people, they get to really get into it because, um. I've had, like, this is a little backstory. So I've had a client, she bought a honey turmeric soap from us. Mm -hmm. um, she bought three and she bought it for her entire family. She has a little bit of hyperpigmentation and dark spots. So she wanted something to help her. And then she reached out to me and she said she loved the soap, but it wasn't really working for her. And a lot of people, they tend to be like, oh, these stuff don't work, these stuff don't work. And she came back to me and I had a stronger version of the soap. I had a kojic tumor, you know. Um, a kojic is like a, it's like a powdered. Um, I think I've seen that. It's like a powdered, I want to describe it. It's kind of white, like a little acid thing, like a powder. Right. Um, like a mineral, I should say. Mm. And it actually can be found in bleaching products. But the way how we use it is not to bleach your skin, but to help with the hyperpigmentation and the dark spots. And I gave that one to her and it worked for her. So a lot of times people are like, they're ready to backlash you if something doesn't work for them. Not knowing that maybe you're not as, cause the honey turmeric, we would prescribe for somebody who really, really have sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of people out there have sensitive skin and they cannot take something as harsh as the cold. But for her, she could manage the code, you can. You know, it's all about, as I said, the same education thing. Like, it's all about coming back. And she wasn't even, like, upset because she said that her sister, it worked for her sister. It worked perfectly, but right. it wasn't working for her. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, she said it made her face feel cool and whatever, but the, the dark spot was as fading, as fast as she would like. Kevin has done my new logo. So if you guys have seen my um, Mia B. Fanning or Mia, the social CEO, on my um, revised, I've kind of like revamped my templates. I've had some time to kind of sit down and pull some things together. And 
I have been incorporating these and I love it. Y'all have to let me know if you're if you liking it. But the signature logo was done by Kevin and he killed it. I love it. I'm happy. So yes, Kevin does graphic design, he does websites, he does everything. He has very great elegant touch. He has done projects for House of the Quest. I consider him a member of our team and he is and get him up on the website if he's up for that I don't know but yeah Kevin is amazing so y'all check out Kev designs he will get you right and yes his business is going to um just blossom and, well if that's the case do you yeah. take your like when a customer makes an order do you take them or walk them through a process or you have them answer some questions to know the type of yeah I try to answer um I try to ask them questions right off the back mm -hmm. just to see where they're at i mean i'm not a dermatologist but i have like the basic knowledge of yeah. like what my soaps do and the purpose for them so i would like to ask them like you know general question to see exactly what they need and then i would tell them the different soaps the different ingredients and i would give them the chance to pick as well because i don't want to force anything onto them right 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 per se so i give them opportunity but i try to educate them as much as i can about the soap, about the ingredients and what it's supposed to do. So yeah, so that's basically it. I love that. And we make lotions as well and we make foam washes. We yeah. also do um we recently released a hair moisturizer, a hair growth moisturizer, and we made a aftershave mist oil for men. And we're going to be branching off into you know more stuff like I'm coming out with a um hair steam treatment soon. Mm -hmm and we're basically going to be leading off like we're not just going to be skin we're going to be internal we're going to provide supplements so like we're really going to branch off into different aspects but i like to gradually get into things i like to test things i don't like to put things out there without testing them right. and i test them on myself <laughs> okay. and um sometimes i would like put on my page if somebody wants to try something for the first time that i haven't released and get an outside opinion mm -hmm. you know stuff like that you know little creative ways like that to you know get genuine people's feedback because even before i have a bunch of shampoo bar right and a first time customer she came to me just random and she was like she had scalp issues and she wanted to make the sofa soap because sofa is good for dry scalp and dandruff and right. i said yeah sure and said you know i was trying to find somebody to test the dandruff bar would you like to try it and she was like yeah sure and she sent back a great little feedback that it worked great for her she's not going back to regular shampoo and things like that just make you feel really good about what you're doing do you have frequent client testimonials um not as much as i would like Mm -hmm. people tend not to share and that's what i was saying like that's my weak area like people will come to me i had to screenshot it sometimes <laughs> <laughs> repost it and stuff like that but people you, you need to give people privacy as well even though you want the feedback and you want to post and let everybody see but i do post when i get it um they'll tag me sometimes and i'll repost it but i think sometimes yeah, it has to do with you know and i know that you do it like the relationship that you build with them mm -hmm. during the order process and, and during the usage process as well. Like you check in and like, you know, how did you enjoy the product? And they're like, oh, you know, it did this, it worked or whatever. Yeah. Or it didn't work or, you Yeah, know. so I think no. those small things like, okay, cool. You have a, I don't know, maybe a, a, a seven day follow up policy mm -hmm. where like in seven days or in, in, in 14 days you, you follow up and you're like checking in. I think that builds that right. credibility as well. Right. And no feedback for us is bad feedback. That's it. No you're either going to get something that you're like, okay, we can tweak this or we can get better at this or whatever the case is. But I love that. And then what I would ask, um, you know, not to go too far in, but where, no, what top advice would you give to anyone who sees this journey and is considering and thinking to themselves how to get to this level or who's even started it and you're like okay well how do i improve or how do i get to this point that you are at right now um, in terms of what starting your own business starting your own business or even in your line of business oh okay um i think my number one advice which i had to learn the hard way is to know when and when to take advice and mm -hmm. when not to take advice mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times there are outside influence that can come in and be like, oh, you need to do it like this, you need to do it like that. But you have to be able to be confident in yourself to have your own footing, 
to know that this is what I want, this is what I want to provide. Um, it's great when you find like-minded individuals that you can, they, but everybody's journey is different. Right. You have to make it unique to yourself. So you have to know how to differentiate between, okay, I'm going to take this advice and I'm not going to take this advice. Don't let somebody force you into doing something that you don't feel is genuinely yours. Be yourself always, be authentic, mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to start. Because when I registered my business, um, I didn't have anything ready. Like I had it written down, I knew what I wanted to do, but mm -hmm. I had nothing out there. Mm -hmm. And I took the leap. I'm not generally saying that that's a, the best start <laughs> because I would say like <clears throat> being a finance person, I would I would even advise that you start right. and then register, get yourself because you can put on on the registration process you can put your actual start date when you started working. Um, you don't have to because I put the exact date that I registered like I put like a month before, uh -huh. so I got fully registered in November twenty twenty one. But I never physically started selling anything. But I would say that start selling or start your business and have a year of sales ready because mm. this is going to be helpful. I mean, some finance tips right Let's here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> when you want to start your business, you're going to need, you're going to want your business bank account. You're going to want all these little things going forward you're going to think about oh i want a card machine to put sales because not everybody has cash ready mm -hmm. and when you're going into the banks they want 18 months cash predictions and because you've been running this for a year prior to registering you already know how much sales you're going to be able to make within that time frame you already know certain details so when they ask you for information it's like you already have it and then you can make a budget from all of that information because you've had prior a prior run basically right of what you're doing so it's so much easier for you to go into certain things you get your tcc and that's like a tax compliance where they do want you to make sure that you're paying your taxes but at the end of the day make sure that you file your taxes <laughs> like don't hold those because you think that whatever well, just pay your taxes i would right. recommend like don't make anybody have anything over you mm -hmm. you don't want to be paying any fines just do what you have to do at the end right, of the day right, right, and right. if you have employees you have to pay statutory taxes for your employees unless you're going to hire them on a contract basis and then they're responsible for doing that themselves. Mm -hmm. But just make sure that you do what you need to do. Don't let anybody stop you. And then you can branch out so easy into other areas of the exporting. You know, there's different avenues which are out there. So that's what, and, that's what I would recommend. Okay. But because I'm a procrastinator, yeah. I had to do <laughs> the other way around. So I registered first and then it was like a push for me to be like, well, I'm registered, I'm really going to do this. Mm -hmm. I like, I'm really doing this right now. So that was really yeah. my... Um, yeah, because the, the more you do it, all right. So once you once you start off, mm -hmm. it's it's exposure at that point. Mm -hmm. Whether you're exposed to information, or you're exposed to the right people or the right environment, mm -hmm. but it's the exposure that helps you to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And um, I would also say that in doing all of these things, you have to always keep that in mind to, to have that exposure going and everything like that. Um, but let me ask you this, like two more questions. Um, do you have any uh, upcoming promos, sales, product launches? Yes, so I do have an upcoming product launch, as I said earlier, the um, hair and steam treatment that I'm making from castor oil and rosemary. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having, I'm going to be having a package deal promotions coming up soon. Um, mm -hmm. I think I want to do one for October, which is breast cancer. I'm trying to, to see if I can find a charity where I could link it to, mm -hmm. so I could give part of the donations to that because I really, um, I really, really love giving back to my community so I'm going to see who I can you know co um, link with what organization I can link with within my area because I'm from Montego Bay mm -hmm. um, and I want to facilitate something like that and I want to do something like with every holiday and stuff I want to make a fun little activity around it right. um, give opportunity people opportunities to try the product if they're afraid to you know that's why I like to give up do giveaways once in a while so you know sometimes people are afraid but when they get the opportunity to try it you just let them 
it's it's just make a budget to know that oh promotional marketing advertising you have your budget and say okay this is what i'm going to do to push myself mm -hmm. and you use that opportunity to get new customers get new clients so that's that's what i have upcoming so okay. that's what i'm working on and, and what's the date for that or there's no set date just yet for the for the product or the um for the product there is i think it will be out in the next two weeks yeah because okay. I'm, I'm finalizing the label design mm -hmm. and stuff like that um i do i make i make this one myself okay right? <laughs> so um yeah so in the next two weeks that one will be out ah mm -hmm. nice 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 and then um the final question mm -hmm. is well i ask all my guests this where do you see yourself in the, or where do you see the business getting to in the next three to five years? Oh my goodness. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited just thinking about it. But um, um, in the next three to five years, I believe that an Orthodox lifestyle will be one of those businesses that the level that it's going to be at is going to be touching lives, like literally, like we are going to offer everything from having healthy skin mm -hmm. having healthy food items right. supplements protein powders teas it's gonna be an entire lifestyle store and that is why the name is unorthodox lifestyle and orthodox come from doing things different and the difference with us is that we're going to be able to make it so affordable for people to eat healthier, mm -hmm. affordable for people to have healthy skincare, affordable for you to get your vitamins and your supplements and your natural herbs and different things. And that's our purpose and that's our end goal that we want to have in Jamaica because I feel like it's so easy to get junk food. And even when junk food is getting really expensive, people yeah, are, are stemming towards it. Yeah. And I want to create an avenue where there's an opportunity for persons to be like, oh, I, I can now afford to try something healthy. Why not? Why not do that? You know, I want to give them the opportunity to change it because health is so important. And even with COVID, mm -hmm. as part, I think it opened a lot of eyes. I see where, even though as something as simple as CMOS. Oh, yeah. it's getting so, so popular and yeah. i'm really excited and happy that it is because i used to when i used to make juices i used to add sea moss in it and i didn't tell my clients necessarily mm -hmm. it had 92 minerals i just made it healthy and i i gave it to them without an additional cost like sometimes it's like everything is not about money and i and, and as much as i am making money i make sure that i do it in a way where i benefit and they benefit and i think at the end of the day I take into consideration not everyone is rich and not everyone is going to be able to afford certain things and i'm just creating an avenue where i'm giving people a chance to right so even if at the end of the day they choose not to it's because they choose not to but i'm creating an avenue for it so <laughs> I'm loving that. that's where i see us in the next week well for sure what 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 i intend to do is how is rewatch this clip in three years? <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, we're gonna be back Tony here. said she was gonna do it and she yeah. did it. Yeah, we're gonna be back here. When I come sure. back to the city, I'm gonna see unorthodox yeah. lifestyle snap slapped on a building. Definitely. Okay. That's, that's where we're gonna be. All right, I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that was um, an amazing interview, really, and definitely learned a lot. Um, hoping to be a part of her marketing team. I'm like sitting here, like, oh, you want flyers and you want. Website, even. Yes. but we'll discuss that okay. um but yes uh, absolutely this was yet another amazing story in the aspire podcast continue to push yourself pushing your business to the greatest level that you possibly can and to change your community and um until next time continue to do great things Bye.